Hey there, Patty here with episode 65 of the Positioning to Profit podcast. Thank you so much for checking out today's episode. I'm sharing three practical tips to help you get unstuck, move the ball forward, and continue to build authority. Now, this isn't about broadcasting your message. These are just simple business strategies that you can implement into your business. So maybe it's a pulse check for you, or maybe it's a swift kick in the butt to get you moving forward. Either way, I'm ready for it. Here we go. Hey there, I'm Patty Dominguez. You're about to discover what it means to position your brand and your business to stand out. This show explores the stories of small business owners just like you who are bringing their message out to the world and impacting their tribe. So if you want to take your business to a category of one status, then hang with me because this podcast shares everything you need to know about how to be more prolific with your brand so that you can have more profits. All right. Hey, 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 Uh, Patty here. Thank you so much for checking out this episode. I so appreciate it. And as you know, and I always say, my best conversations have happened or continue to happen every single weekday when I get to work with my clients. Notice the word get to because I love what I do. And as you know, you just see trends or you see patterns in the way that things are going. And I don't know about you, but last week I was in a really crazy funk. Yes, of course, I took my calls and everything was going well, but I wasn't feeling all that productive. Um, My team and I, we've been going really hard on some of the things that we're rolling out, and I'm super pumped for what's coming as we're going into Q4, quarter four, and wrapping up the year, but in a really great way, teeing things up. I have my little mini book coming out very shortly. I'll be uh, promoting that. You'll be seeing that in your social media timeline, more to come on that one. And then of course, the positioning to profit advisory program also is something that I will be telling you more about, sharing more about how you can dive into that if you're looking to establish your category of one and make the competition irrelevant. So first things first, one of the things that I do see patterns, you know, and this is where I really wanna share, is being resourceful versus depending on resources. Now that is tip number one that is super important because I'm a coach in a group of, of uh, s- small business owners, entrepreneurs, and a lot of times questions come up around, hey, I don't have a whole lot of money for traffic, let's say. And people are looking for cheap ways to market their business. I happen to believe that you have to be in the business of marketing your business, otherwise you don't have that much of a business. Now here's the thing, when you're starting out, it's always good to start out slow and maybe you don't have this major marketing um, thousands that you can spend on ads or anything like that, but this is really a call to action for yourself to say, hey listen, instead of being an individual that is waiting for things to come along for me, Uh, or waiting for until the time I have the time or money, one of the things that you can do is to grab the concept of making things happen for yourself. And very simply, I had uh, shared a concept that I learned from you know, a mentor of mine in 2013 when I was starting out on my own and I was in that very same situation. And he said, you probably have time, enough time to go out there and connect to 40 or 50 people every day. So whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn or what have you, tell me that if you connect to 50 people, start conversations on the daily, so Monday through Friday, and of those, you can have maybe five Uh, exploratory calls, out of those five, you can potentially close new coaching packages or something like that. So this truly is about being resourceful and refusing to accept no or like, or thinking, oh, I just don't have the money to have traffic or run ads. I mean, the point is, is that you can't wait for the correct time to appear. You just have to go out and making it and make it happen. So really, this is about being resourceful and being driven by that desire of, I will not be denied. I'm moving the ball forward. And I almost have that vision of moving the ball forward consistently. And I know some of you have heard that uh, tale of Jerry Seinfeld, where it, an aspiring comedian went up to him and he said, Hey, Jerry, how'd you get so great? You know, he's like, You know what? Pull out a calendar. And every time that you write jokes, put an X right for the day when you're writing your jokes and just continue the chain of X's and never stop the chain of X's. And that's how you make it happen. It's being really consistent and just being very resourceful and understanding that this is a 
you know, deal where you can't take your foot off the gas. You got to keep going. And in spite of the fact that sometimes I'm just not in the mood to move the ball forward, I know I have the systems in place. So really the, the other side of it is hiring somebody, hiring at least somebody to help you in your business. And really ask yourself if the reason that you can hire someone is because you haven't taken, you haven't made the, the decision. Because when you do hire someone, you will free up time. And when you free up time, that'll help you move the ball forward. And when you are in those instances where you're just not in the mood to work on your business, the fact is you have somebody to, that's going to help you 10 hours a week or 20 hours a week. That's 10 or 20 hours of productivity that you don't have to do yourself, right? So be resourceful and understand that you have to be resourceful and finding new ways to move the ball forward instead of waiting for things to happen for the time to be just right or for the research to come to you. Because as you know, that isn't going to be the case, you know? Uh, and another idea is just showing up. And generally, when you do that, you're taking way more of a step forward than other people are willing to take. I know that for me doing a podcast every week, my team always laughs at me every week because I'm like, okay, what's the podcast for the week? And sometimes I'm like kicking and screaming about having to launch a podcast because sometimes I'm just like, oh, I just don't want to do it. And other times I'm like, oh, right, I have to get that in. And so it's a commitment for me. And so now I've gotten to a place where I just want to be mega consistent with it and just showing up, right? Because if you can just show up, you're generally a step ahead of others who aren't willing to show up. And so when you do that, and I read this factoid, which is really, really great. The average American household spends about $40 or $50 on books and less than 10% of people actually read the book. So when you are paired up against that type of a person or the average American, let's say, and then only 10% of the people that actually buy books are reading the books, you know that just by showing up, you're far and away ahead of anybody else, right? And or the majority of people, I should say. Let me recheck the majority of people. So just show up, you know, and generally when you do that, you're definitely going to set yourself apart from the rest. So show up even when it seems heavy, even when you don't want to, and uh, even when it's not convenient. Okay. The other one is speed. This is something that in a coaching program that I'm in, people have a tendency, and not just that group, by the way, this is any entrepreneur that I've come across. It is more often than not that people feel the need to be absolutely perfect and perfect the thing that they're doing, over-perfecting, perfectionism. Uh, Perfectionism actually leads to procrastination, and procrastination leads to this really weird thing where you think you are being kept safe instead of moving forward, right? And so here's the attitude of real entrepreneurs. They love speed and having that do it now attitude. And even when it's not perfect, because let's face it, there's no such thing as perfect. They take action and they put it out there. And I know that perfect example is I did a webinar or an online training this month And I can honestly say the content was great. I was inspired to put together my presentation. Was it perfect? No, because after I did it, I went back and I realized I could have done a more thorough job of the conversion part of the presentation. And I know that I can tweak it, right? But the fact of the matter is, this whole thing is a process of continuing to refine. But when I had that do it now attitude, I just put it out there. I always say like, just ship it, even when again, it's not convenient, because there's a logical sequence to things. And as long as you have the gist of what it is that you want to put out there, refining it and making it uh, more Um, effective, if you're looking at different conversions, that's one thing, but that's not going to stop me. So what you have to have, or what really would help you is having a sense of urgency, and being super decisive and acting swiftly. And and I know that some people have heard Tony Robbins say taking massive action. But (laughs) 
but it's taking that action that is going to make things different. So just, I call it having the do it now attitude and just ship it, right? So that's the other way to get out of the funk is that even when it's not convenient and when you feel like it's a heavy thing to do, I have my quarterly goals up on my whiteboard and in my office here. And I just have this checklist of, okay, here's what I commit to doing. And it's a matter of being committed to myself, committed to my goals, committing to even more importantly, who I can serve, making it not about me, but really who I want to serve. So as I'm wrapping up this month, I'm looking at, oh gosh, I have to do videos and I have to get them out because the content that I have to share the information that I have to share is going to help people who need that help. So when I look at it that way, and just me being selfish, if I don't take that action, and me being selfish by holding on to these things that I know that I can help people effectively, that gets me going in a way where I'm like, okay, I have to do this. I have to take action. So really just be impatient with yourself and be not willing to uh, say, oh, I'll just do it next week, right? And and don't worry about it being perfect. There's no such thing as perfect. Instead, just make sure to take action and to be very diligent about it. Now, that whiteboard action, like I'm talking about, I live and die by my whiteboard. As a matter of fact, I had my whiteboard for a while and then somehow I took it down because I had moved uh, spaces of where my uh, spaces where I work and I remodeled my space here and I have my whiteboard back up and I have found that it's supremely helpful because by month I have a checklist of those revenue generating activities that are going to help me. So I have my, uh, uh, the, the revenue goals that I have exactly how I'm going to get there. So it's very much a uh, fill in the blank in other words, how many conversions happen. So really understanding your key performance indicators. And the key performance indicators I look at is, right, what are my costs per leads? What is my average order? And then, of course, what is my lifetime value? As a matter of fact, I'm going to be synthesizing all this of how I look at things and how I've structured my business that has had a really great impact. And I'm going to be launching a workshop coming in November um, that covers these things that have had a really impactful, uh, it's just, it's been really great. It's been really great because I can concretize what I'm doing in a way where I can see my ROI, my return on investment when I do something and when I don't do something and what's working and what did I put out there instead of just being on social media, which I, to be honest with you, I don't really do. I'm in and out. But when I look at my things on my whiteboard here, I look at it as a checklist of here's the urgency. It's for example, September, I made a commitment to get these eight things done that are going to be revenue generators for me. And I literally am laser focused until those are all done. And there you have it. Like when you break things down by quarter, by month, by week, it really is as simple as that. And again, I'll be sharing more about the whole KPI saying how I get organized and what's been really uh, substantial for me to organize my business in an online training that is coming in probably November. Yeah, I'm going to do it in November. All right. So the other thing is uh, that's really important is really managing change, right? Change is inevitable. Change is super important. I was very much planning on, <laughs> at the beginning of the year, I had a goal of getting on six stages. So I wanted to do live events. I did some live events last year. Uh, in Q3 and 4, and I was really feeling uh, feeling very inspired to do more speaking. I actually really enjoy it tremendously. One of the things that I wanted to do was be more purposeful about getting on more stages, whether it's locally here in the Chicago area or traveling to other speaking engagements, ultimately to get on a big stage, you know. So in my goal setting in January of 2020, I said, OK, I want to get on six stages this year. And lo and behold, of course, everything happening with COVID, everything shuts down and then we've had to pivot, right? Everybody has. And so the question of all questions that we always want to know as entrepreneurs is like, okay, so if that's the situation, how can I pivot? How can I be nimble? How can I go with the flow 
And then any time that fear creeps up, just think to yourself, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? So let's say I planned a summit and I didn't. I'll probably do one next year. I plan a summit and it completely bombs. Okay, whatever. To be honest with you, that happens all the time. Like when, not all the time, but it happens when I haven't put enough planning into place, but then I'm always looking at things as a learning opportunity instead of a failure. It's giving me feedback, you know? So dealing with change and being very practical about it is how I've really changed and grown and scaled in my business. Instead of looking at the growth of my business and hoping it'll work because we know hoping is not a strategy. Instead, I really look at the way Napoleon Hill spoke of what he talks about this concept of accurate thinking. And accurate thinking is, which may be um, his, it's a strategy where you don't think of things as impossible, but certain things may not be worth the time and effort. And so learning to compromise quality to get things done. So excellence is overrated and instead just be very practical about being smart, uh, about specific aspects of what I'm doing and not having this delusional sense of, okay, well, it has to be done. Like I didn't get on those six stages or that. So now what am I to do? I freeze in that, in that midst. It's like, no, I have to be very practical and pivot and change. And that's just a constant. And that's how I've been able to have a great year. To be honest with you, 2020 has been so interesting in so many ways where in Q1, when everything was going on and right as COVID hit, um, I had some corporate contracts get pulled and it was, a situation where I quickly had to just adapt and move forward in a new direction. And because of that, because I was very practical, because I was just saying, here, I'm dealing with change. I'm going to have the attitude, okay, let's do this. And it's going to give me some feedback. Uh, I was able to quickly move into a direction where I saved a whole lot of pain instead of being in this panic mode, which of course would not have served me. And then the last one that I can honestly say that has been so, so helpful is just being curious. Being being curious has been really a great way to see things. And it's not about seeing things in a negative light. It's about asking really good questions. And what I have found is when I'm curious, I make it light. And when things are light, then it becomes fun. And so I always ask from a potentiality standpoint, I look at things like, okay, well, what would happen if, or like, how can I make this fun? Or how can I take a lighter approach to this? And when I look at things from a curious standpoint, it really infuses it with fun. And that fun factor is what I was really missing, especially last year. Last year was what a It's so fascinating because for a lot of people, this year has been difficult and challenging for some people, but I, in turn, have been very focused on my own growth and how I'm managing the way that I see things. And just having that idea of being more curious and asking questions and what are what are possibilities here, that's really guided me to some really, really great epiphanies in how I've been able to manage change and quickly pivot and seeing change as something positive and inviting change into my life. So that's what I would say is supremely helpful. Now, with all of this, keep in mind that if you're in business, and one of the things that's super important is the ability to have these underlying strategies that are going to help you continue to move the ball forward, but you also need to have that support. And what I really encourage you to do is check out my prolific cafe where I just opened up a course on how to sell, having that sales conversation map. So selling is absolutely critically important and it is extremely rare to find somebody that is successful in their business who doesn't know how to sell. So you absolutely have to know how to sell. You have to know how to share what it is that you're doing with your marketing, with uh, your promoting. It's just selling. And you're really looking at things in a way where I have a more responsibility to share this with you. So if you're interested, you absolutely have to check out 
prolificcafe.com, P-R-O-L-I-F-I-C, cafe, C-A-F-E.com. Prolificcafe.com is the membership that I have, and literally for the cost of a latte every day, you can gain uh, really awesome coaching with me every single week. There is a portal where you can ask your questions 24-7. I have a whole host of courses that you can partake in to help you move your business forward. And the best part is I have a new course that launches every six weeks, and this week, we just launched the sales conversation map. And then I also gave you a strategy for how to use that in a funnel, right? So lots of different practical tips and strategies, strategies, again, literally for the cost of a latte, like, hello, it is awesome. And of course, we have a growing community there. And it would just be my absolute pleasure to host you over there. So head on over to prolificcafe.com. And I would love to see you in see you there on the inside. Um, Okay, so that is it for today's show. I hope this was of value to you. I look forward to connecting with you real soon and definitely reach out and let me know how I can support you as you are establishing your category of one so that you can make your competition irrelevant. All right, see you next time. Thank you so much for checking out the Positioning to Profit podcast. If you haven't already done so, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new episodes. And also, it would mean the world to me if you would take a quick moment to leave a rating and review on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, or your favorite podcast player. It really helps to get the word out about the podcast and, of course, the featured guests. And lastly, please make sure to connect with me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. I'm on all of them and use hashtag positioning to profit so that I can (laughs) search you out and connect that way too. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.